in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed says to strike the shepherd and he says the sheep will scatter and so satan is always interested in leadership and interested in people who have capacity within a territory hallelujah now let me start this morning by reiterating on something that i said yesterday it is important for the believer to understand and please lend me your attention it is important, can I have a little, just amplification on the volume? Thank you, technical, so I can hear myself clearer. Thank you. It's important for us to understand that the believer, the preordination of the believer in Christ is that your life eventually becomes a manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. Hallelujah. I want to start with that statement. It's a very simple but profound statement that there is a preordination to every believer in Christ. And that includes you and I. That in Christ, our corporate prophetic destiny is that regardless how you start, regardless the current situation, that the end of your journey in Christ should be that your life becomes in experience a manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. That is God's goal for you. Beyond just the experience of the afterlife, that God in his mind, in the design of man, that he had this at the back of his mind, that the end of the believer's journey must become the manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. That is very important because the word glory, like I began to discuss with us yesterday, the word glory comes from many expressions, both Hebrew and Greek. But two are of essence. The Greek is called kabod. I mean, the Hebrew is kabod, the Greek is doxa. And all of them are an attempt to describe the value of a person or the value of a thing. So to understand the glory of a thing, you have to describe the characteristic features that makes that object or that individual expensive, desirable, or valuable. Are we together? So if I talk about the glory of my phone, I will have to describe all the features in the phone that makes it perhaps expensive. If I talk about the glory of a vehicle, a car, I would have to describe all the features that makes that car unique. So when we talk about the glory of God, is an attempt to capture every dimension in God that makes him mighty, that makes him desirable. That means his wisdom is an aspect of his glory. His power is an aspect of his glory. Are we together? His mercy is an aspect of his glory. In discussing the glory of God, we have to do an elaborate and an extensive discussion across the various dimensions of God that makes him God. And the Bible says that is the mandate of the believer in Christ. That your life literally becomes a living epistle. Are we still together? Your life becomes an explanation to the multifaceted dimensions of God. So that when people look at your life, they see eventually the wisdom of God, the power of God, the favor of God. They see that speed can work in the life of a man. They see that restoration is possible in the economy of God. If your life fails to capture and to reveal the glory of God, you have lost your prophetic mandate. So listen carefully, please. 
Your assignment as a believer in truth is not to be a businessman. No. Your assignment as a believer is not to be a preacher. No. <laughs> Your assignment as a believer is not to be a parent. No. Not to become a politician. No. Those are just the descriptions of the geography of your assignment. Your real assignment is that your life eventually becomes an effulgence, a manifestation, a description, an explanation of the unknown God to your world. It's important you understand this. When you sustain this orientation, you will move beyond the mentality of a businessman. Beyond the mentality of a student, beyond the mentality of a preacher, I don't think like a preacher. No, my mandate is beyond being a preacher. Preaching is only a vehicle that helps me to manifest that mandate. There are many believers who say, I am a businessman, I am a preacher, I am a parent. And by pegging yourself along that thought, you limit yourself from manifesting the fullness of the glory of God. Are we together now? This is very important. So your mandate beyond business, beyond ministry, is that your life and my life becomes eventually a manifestation of the glory of God. Please lay your hands and turn it into a prayer in one minute. My life must become Someone pray, my life must become a manifestation of the glory of God. Are we praying? Shalike parus kabrende gebelekus kiaba. Beyond being a businessman, beyond being a preacher, your hands on your head, you are praying. Shadis kani kabarandos kavredi belekos yata. For in Jesus' name we pray. Now, watch this. John chapter 15 and verse 8. The Bible says, John 15 and verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. The Father is glorified when you bear much fruit. John 15 and verse 16. Same John verse 16. 15, 16, 1, 5, 1, 6. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Galatians 1, 24. I want to show you a few scriptures. Let's read Galatians 1, 24 together. Ready? One, two, read. And they glorified God in me. One more time. God can be glorified in a man. A businessman, a preacher, God can be glorified in a man. Are we together? Many believers want to see the glory of God manifest, but they do not know and they have not received for certain within their spirit that their lives have been ordained to be a manifestation of the glory of God. So the businessman is just doing business because he wants money. The preacher is just preaching perhaps because he wants members. The parent is just satisfying the ritual of parenthood. Are we together? The politician just finds his way in politics and is just doing the best that he knows to do. It is a very poor orientation until you understand our corporate destiny in Christ. That in doing business, or in doing what you call ministry, or in doing what you call politics, you must have this at the back of your mind, that I have a corporate destiny. My preordination in Christ is that my life becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. 
whether that is through singing, whether that is through preaching, whether that is through leadership. So you see that when you sustain that orientation, your approach becomes different. Business for you becomes more than buying and selling. Business for you becomes more than a platform to just have money. Because I can tell you, and many of you here will bear witness, that nothing in itself sustains the power to give an individual satisfaction, not even money. There are many billionaires and millionaires who have committed suicide with millions and billions in the bank. There has to be a pursuit that is greater than the acquisition of things. There has to be a pursuit that is greater than the desire for power. All of these things will come and fade. One man who had all and still lived a frustrated life was the man Solomon. He had wealth like no one in this place has currently. He had power that you could not imagine. He said, confessing his own limitation, that everything my eyes saw, I desired. I don't know what kind of a man that was. Solomon for you. But at the end of his life, here's what he said. Here is the conclusion of the matter. He said, of reading many books, there is no end. And much study is only a weariness to the soul. He said, fear the Lord and keep his commandments. He said, for this is the whole duty of man. Are we learning this morning? So it's important for us to establish this, that my life and your life has been ordained by God Almighty to be a manifestation of the glory of God. That means the God that men cannot see must be revealed in and through my life. That someone will look at you and say, Joshua Selman, I have never seen Jesus, but if he looks like you, then he's worth my allegiance. Because your life has become a clear picture of what Jesus looks like. Are we together? The second thought that I want you to know and want you to have this morning is found in Jeremiah chapter 9. We considered it briefly yesterday and I'll take it from there. Jeremiah chapter 9, 23 and 24. Thus saith the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, the Bible says. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord that exerciseth loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Now, while the emphasis in this verse was to take your attention away from things <clears throat> to focus on the Lord, there are three expressions of glory that I want to call your attention to this morning. Please back to verse 23. The Bible says from this scripture that the glory of God, if it is to be revealed in a man, there are many dimensions and many expressions of the glory like I told you. But there are three of them literally that represent the manifestation of the glory of God in a man. I hope we're still together. Remember I started by telling you that God's ordination for us is that our lives become a manifestation of the glory of God. And that among the many dimensions of glory that the Lord seeks to be made manifest in our lives are these three dimensions. Number one, wisdom. Number two, might or power. Number three, riches or wealth. That in your seeking to be a manifestation of the glory of God, regardless whether you are a businessman you are a preacher, you are a parent, you are a public servant. It doesn't matter the geography of your call. That if you love Jesus enough and you desire to see his glory revealed in and through your life, among the many manifestations of his glory that you must seek to see revealed through your life are these three. One, wisdom. Two, might or power. Three, riches listen this is the correct perspective 
to approach the pursuit for these things. To blindly just look for money because you are tired of poverty is not a spiritual orientation enough. The agenda is beyond just having money or beyond just being a wise man. It is that there is a desperation from within your spirit to see the glory of God revealed and that since these are the dimensions of glory that must be captured, no matter what other dimension of the glory of God is revealed, if these three are missing, you cannot reveal the glory of God to a generation. Wisdom. Might or power. Riches. The Bible says, using Jesus as a case study in Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, speaking about Jesus, your Jesus, when he walked upon the earth, the Bible says, and Jesus increased. The first aspect of his increase was in wisdom. Please say wisdom. Jesus being the manifestation of the glory of the Father, for him to have truly lived that assignment as the manifestation of the glory of the Father, he needed wisdom, even though he was the Word himself. Jesus increased. He did not just have wisdom. He contended for increase. At age 12, when those in his age range were roaming around, the Bible says he was at the temple to the point that his parents came and they said, listen, we've been looking for you. And he said, do you not know that I should be about my father's business? And the business was not doing. The business was learning. He sat under the scribes and the Pharisees and he began to learn. Many believers desire to see the glory of God manifest through their lives, but they have ignored wisdom. The man that ignores wisdom has also ignored the fruits of wisdom. My Bible, your Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. We excel in life and destiny upon the strength of the wisdom of God that is at work in us. Is someone learning now? Wisdom is profound. Many have rejected it to their detriment. But ladies and gentlemen, those who have been able to rise in business, to rise in ministry, to rise in destiny, are men and women who have paid the price to allow the wisdom of the Spirit to be made manifest in their lives. Any two individuals, the results of any two individuals can be explained. The disparity of their results can be explained by the presence or the absence of wisdom. Two people can be in construction, for instance, as a business, and one person can fail so woefully, and then another person excel in the same Ghana. The difference is not the will of God. The difference is not the love of God, for the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is wisdom. He said, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your mouth. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life, not to everybody, to those that find them and health to their flesh. Many of us have rejected wisdom. We have a passion with all due respect, to make money, to be famous, to be in ministry, it takes more than desire to rise in life. It takes more than a good heart to rise in life. You want to excel, you want to lead your field, you want the glory of God to be made manifest in business, I can tell you the first key you must pursue is wisdom. The Bible says in Proverbs 8, it said, Doth not wisdom cry. Wisdom is like a woman crying, crying. Understanding is raising her voice. Men and women in Ghana, men and women in Africa, you will need me to rise. And others have ignored the cry of wisdom. And yet they continue to pursue the fruits that only wisdom can give. The reason why many Christians are limited, limited in ministry, limited in life, because most believers will not contend for wisdom. 
The Bible says in Daniel 11 and verse 32, we considered that scripture yesterday, that the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and shall do exploits. There's no time, but I want you to see three expressions from that scripture. The first is do know. The second is be strong. The third is do exploits. There is knowledge, there is becoming, then there is doing. This is how things work in the spirit. Every journey to exploit starts with knowledge. Then the knowledge brings transformation. It is the transformed you that now acts. Action in ignorance is a waste of energy. Action in ignorance, when you take action bankrupt of knowledge and wisdom, it is called the labor of the fool. Have you read such a thing in the Bible? My Bible says the fool, even though he's not lazy, there is something called the labor of the fool. The labor of the fool can be in ministry. The fool here not being an insult is a description of a man that is bankrupt of wisdom. When the Bible calls a man a fool, it's not an insult. It is a state, the description of a man who has rejected wisdom. The labor of the fool, where yet every one of them. Why? Because he knoweth not how to go into the city. Not because there is no way to the city. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. The things that we desire, whether it be influence, whether it be higher levels of relationships, business connections, some of us want to excel in ministry. We are trusting God to raise us to become voices that speak his purposes to the nations. It will not happen just by blind desire. There is a place for wisdom. Are we together? When I found this in my own life, I made up my mind that I was going to cry for wisdom. I was aware. Can I tell you, it is a real miracle that has happened to you when you realize the level of your ignorance. That in itself is a miracle. The awareness that you need help is God already helping you. Did you get what I said? The fact that you come into an understanding that I need help, I am bankrupt of wisdom in business, in ministry, in destiny. Even if you don't know what to do, the fact that you have come into an understanding of your need is already a sign that God is working. And this is what God is doing to someone. An awareness. It is true. You will be amazed with all due respect. How many people in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Malawi, Zimbabwe, people who just continue to quote scriptures and jump, I can't fail. And, and that is true according to scripture. Unfortunately, that is not the key that leads to it. Discussing and wishing success does not bring success. There are principles to engage as far as the manifestation of the glory of God is concerned. Hallelujah. When I came in and I sat, I saw the man of God ministering. I've never seen him, just meeting him for the first time. But I know that he's a great worshiper within your territory and across. And while, while, while he was ministering, let me tell you the truth. I was not just seeing a man who God has helped. I was also seeing a man who has acquired wisdom. Are we together? Stop wishing people's results. Embrace wisdom and let it carry you like a flight. Stop wishing and praying, claiming and frustrating yourself. No, in the name, I have to be like this preacher. No. The only aircraft that leads men to the destiny of the great is wisdom. And if you are not on board, you will not get there. It's as simple as that. I hope I'm not too harsh this morning. Say wisdom. 
in all you're getting, get understanding. What is wisdom? The awareness of truth alongside the grace to apply them appropriately. Wisdom is the awareness of truth alongside the grace to apply them appropriately. The power to apply truth is what turns knowledge to wisdom. Please listen. Knowledge is important, but it's not enough. The power to apply truth such that it delivers the result as God intended is what we call wisdom. Many people have knowledge. They are not in ignorance, but they have not sustained the power to apply. There are hardly any things that I'll be saying this morning that you have not heard before. But the reason why it has not worked for you is because it's still at the realm of knowledge. Until it translates to wisdom, it cannot deliver. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. So wisdom is one of the expressions of the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you by the authority of scripture. It is a beautiful thing to see a man and a woman who has invested in becoming a manifestation of the wisdom of God. Your life becomes beautiful. An explanation. Show me a businessman who has paid the price to be wise. Show me a preacher who has paid the price to be wise. Show me a parent who has paid the price to be wise. And ladies and gentlemen, the word of God is the compendium of the wisdom of God. We learn the wisdom of God when we have a thorough understanding of his ways as revealed in his word. Are we together? And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation. The word of God can make men wise. Did you hear what I said? The word of God, the Bible as we know it, is the richest capture of the wisdom of God. No man can truly become if you ignore the word of God. It is in his light that we see light. The Bible can turn a foolish man to become a wise man. Can you know, listen, the proof of wisdom is shown in the superiority of your decisions. You know that the wisdom of God is at work in your life because of the quality of the decisions that you make. And in truth, decisions decide destiny. My life and your life today is a messless reflection of the decisions that we have taken. With all due respect, and I do not mean to insult your pedigree nor intelligence, if you are poor today, it's beyond the devil. The devil is an opportunist. He does not just act until a certain atmosphere is prepared for him. There are a class of demon spirits that are called rulers of darkness. Their dominion starts everywhere there is no light. Hallelujah. If you've not risen to your prophetic potential in ministry, in business, in leadership, take responsibility this morning. Don't just blame Satan. Don't just blame government. Don't just blame men. Stand this morning and cry for wisdom. And say, Father, I'm tired of making foolish mistakes. Relational mistakes. Financial mistakes. God has been merciful to many of us from the start to the end of this year. But we've not been able to maximize destiny because we are bankrupt of wisdom. Is it alright if I request that you lay your hands one more time on your head and cry for the spirit of wisdom? Go ahead. Someone pray. The spirit of wisdom. The spirit of wisdom rest upon my life. Rest upon my business. Rest upon my ministry. Tired of making mistakes. My decisions have been poor. My decisions have been inferior. Leading me to losses. Leading me to pain. Leading me to disappointments. I keep going round in circles. 
I contend for wisdom. Let the spirit of wisdom become my bailout out of a life of mediocrity, a life of failure. Oh, go ahead and pray. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. A few more seconds. For the way of the law is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the law. For the way of the law is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the law. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 4, 28 and 29. Go to verse 29, please. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Who gave? God. Who gives wisdom? Does any man lack wisdom? The Bible says, let him ask. Let him ask. How do you know you lack wisdom? Because your life is not making progress. Every decision you make lands you in trouble. Financial decisions lands you in pain. Business decisions keep you recycling around a realm. A day must come, you must get tired of your current condition and say father there has to be a way out you anointed me you've called me to be great what is limiting my greatness the bible says and god gave god gave joshua selman and god gave god still gives men men who are humble enough to ask are we together i hope god is speaking to us this morning i can tell you sincerely when the wisdom of god lands upon your business I give you a guarantee. One year is too much for you to rise. Believe me. I'm not talking of Sophia. Human wisdom. It is by wisdom that the great rise in life. Even those who are not of God. They consult with familiar spirits. And they fraternize with dark powers. In an attempt to simulate divine wisdom. There is nothing extraordinary on earth. That happens just by human capacity. No. Don't be fooled by people who hide their spiritual orientation. And make it, they make it look like they are just all intellectual. It's a lie. There are dimensions of results you can never attain on earth. Whether diabolically or with God. A spirit must assist you to move beyond a certain threshold. It is true. I don't care whether that is in business. I don't care whether that is in ministry. Man cannot rise unassisted. Spirits always assist men to rise. Whether it is a demonic spirit or it is the spirit of the living God. But there are certain levels of influence, greatness, results that if you ever see a mortal man carry, it is because that man has been helped by a spirit. Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. I'm saying this because someone, you are at a point in your life now where you need to be tired of your current result. Giving explanations will keep you frustrated. Remember I told you your preordination in Christ is that your life becomes a manifestation of the glory of God. If your life fails to reveal the glory of God, you will die of jealousy and anger. You will be angry at people. I started ministry before this one. I started, that is not the issue. 
Whoever has wisdom is the one who rises, not who starts first. Are we together? Hmm. By wisdom, O oh God, heaven's gates open up. With understanding you order the seasons Creating day and night Turning darkness into light Arranging the stars to your pleasing By wisdom, O oh God Heaven's gates open up With understanding you order the season Listen when I realized in my life that I was bankrupt of the wisdom of God, I went to the Lord in tears and in prayer. Do not send me if you will not give me wisdom. I will only waste my time and punish the destinies of millions in ignorance. Even if not for my sake, any leader here, I can tell you with all due respect, I don't care the intellectual qualification you have leadership in today's world has become more spiritual than ever you will need wisdom if all you have is a piece of paper i respect it but get ready to pay a very huge price with the wickedness the prejudices and the biases that exist in our world we live in a world where the color of your skin can become the prison that keeps you today we live in a world where your tribal affiliations can become a reason for your downfall. The edge for you is the wisdom of God. I'm speaking to someone who has struggled. I'm speaking to a man of God who was genuinely called, but is right now getting frustrated in ministry because you've done all you know to do. No money, no membership, no leadership, no influence. Yet you are genuinely called of character. The problem is the absence of wisdom wisdom is so superior when it lands in your life the results speak immediately i hope you believe what you're hearing the bible says solomon offered a thousand bond offerings then the lord comes to him in first kings chapter 3 and says solomon now that you have done this you have attracted my attention through your sacrifice what do i give you and the young boy Solomon said, God, I am a young person and you have made me a leader over all these your people. Who am I in this frailty? This is my frailty. I'm not able to lead these people. But then he says that you give me a wise and an understanding heart. And the Bible says because you have not asked for the life of your enemies or money or power or all of these things, the understanding heart indeed I will give you but in addition... I will give you riches, wealth, and honor such as no man had had. This man woke up in the morning. If you were Solomon's roommate, you would never know that he had received something. You just say, good morning, sir. Not knowing the version of the person you slept on the same bed with is no longer the version that has woken up. Let me prophesy to someone in the name of Jesus Christ. The weak you, the you that has not sustained the wisdom and intelligence of the spirit that came here, will never be that version of you that returns back i pray for someone a baptism of the spirit of wisdom let it rest upon you now a baptism of the spirit of wisdom let it rest upon you now please be seated let me repeat myself one last time before we proceed the proof of wisdom is the quality of the decisions that you make which translate to the quality of your life decisions decide destiny spiritual decisions intellectual decisions relational decisions financial decisions corporate and organizational decisions the proof of wisdom is seen in the quality of decisions so Solomon the wise, his wisdom is about to be tested. Everybody, please let me have your attention. Solomon sits as king and the first case that is brought to test his wisdom was a case of two women, two harlots. 
The Bible lets us know that those women slept and for whatever reason, they slept on their children. I wish I had time. This is very powerful because the children there are just beyond human beings. They speak of visions. One killed her vision by sleeping on it. And then the Bible says, while it was night, they exchanged the children. And by morning, there was all kinds of trouble. And they went and stood before King Solomon. Verse 17 of 1 Kings, the Bible says, the woman said, I was delivered with child and was in a house. And then when you read on verse 18, Solomon now is in a dilemma. He's standing with these women. And the other woman is saying, this one killed my child. The Bible says, Solomon said there is a solution to this. He said, bring me the sword. The moment the word of God was introduced, which is the sword of the spirit, the person who was guilty was immediately. Solomon said, no, the wisdom I have received is beyond the realm of intellect. I only activate that wisdom when the word of God is in partnership with my thinking. He said, bring me the sword. The moment the sword arrives, there will be a clear separation and there will be an explanation. The woman who had the child said, no, instead of me losing my child, my vision, I love this vision so much, even if I'm not the person who takes care of it, please give it to her. And he said, that is it. Wisdom. Demonstrated through the soul. I don't know what I would have done if I were Solomon. Maybe I would have carried the child and told two of them to just go away. I would keep the child in the palace. You get the glory. That would be someone's song. You get the praise. You take the honor. I just want to say thank you. So in my life. Be glorified, be glorified in this place. Be glorified, be glorified. You get the glory, you get the praise, you take the honor. I just want to say thank you. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let's go to number two quickly. The second index, the second pillar that becomes the expression of God's glory in the life of any believer, any businessman, any leader is called might or power. Let's discuss power. What is power? Hmm. Power is defined number one as the force that compels compliance. Please write it down. My definition of power, number one, the force that compels compliance. The force that compels compliance. Number two, power is defined as the supernatural ability to produce God's dimension of results. The supernatural ability to produce God's dimension of results. Is called power. In physics, many of us who are science-based, we study among the many laws, the laws of mechanics. We come to study about the laws that were postulated by a man called Sir Isaac Newton. And he postulated three laws of motion in his study of mechanics. And the law number one, he stated that everybody remains in a state of rest or uniform motion except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. The meaning of that is that 
if I drop this right here, theoretically, it should remain here even after 100 years. If it ever moves, it's because a force was exerted that is greater than the force keeping it here. This is what he was saying. Do you know what that means? Your life will remain where it is until a force greater than what is holding you pushes you to the next level. Everybody say power. Shout power. Yes, sir. Men advance in life on the strength of the kind and the dimension of power. Intellectual power. Relational power. But the greatest of all is spiritual power. Are we together? There are people today who have built businesses and you say this man is powerful simply because of the stretch of relationships they have around them. They know this person, they know that person, they know this and they can tell you don't touch me. There are consequences to touching me. They may not have the ability to fight you physically but they have relational power. There are those who have intellectual power. Gates of destiny is open when they step in because of the sacrifice they have developed themselves so much. Institutions have acknowledged that they are powerful. Ladies and gentlemen, if you are powerless in this world, you will never rise. The greatest of all, available to all, not everybody sadly has had the privilege and the opportunity to be educated, perhaps to the level that they desire. Not everybody has had the opportunity to be so relationally connected to the people that matter. But one advantage that everybody can have is access to the Holy Spirit alongside the power that he brings. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, how God anointed Jesus, your Jesus who increased in wisdom, did not just stop at the realm of wisdom. When it has to do with delivering and the, those that were oppressed, wisdom was not mentioned here. The Bible says, anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power, and he went about. It's impossible to be full of power and be stagnated. When you are full of power, you will go about. You will move from place to place. The Bible says, for God was with him. Why do we need power? Two reasons. Number one, because the Bible tells us that we live in an evil world. Please listen carefully. The entire world is immersed in wickedness. And the Bible does not hide that fact. It says now we are of God. And the whole world, that includes Ghana. The whole world is under the sway of the evil one. Why do we need power? The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Why do we need power? The gates of hell. A description of demonic forces that are determined. Jesus himself said, I will build my church. But he said that the adversary, the gates of hell. I think it's Second Peter or so, chapter 5 if I recall. He said, be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, goeth about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And let me tell you the truth. Most people don't know how hard working the devil is. When God probed him and said, from whence cometh thou? He said, from moving to and fro the earth. The person who can move the length and breadth of the earth is not a lazy person. The probability that he will come around your neighborhood is 100% and he will come. Why do you need power? There are forces determined to see that your children do not rise. Why do you need power? There are forces that have vowed that your influence will be covered forever. Why do you need power? Because the realm of the spirit is power dependent. Anything, the language in the spirit is a language of power. It takes power to be wealthy beyond knowledge. No wonder God gives men the power to prosper. Are we together? Psalm 66 and verse 3. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. Jesus himself 
training the disciples he's about to send them now to go and preach the bible says when he had called the 12 disciples he gave them power against everybody say power against yes there is power against unclean spirits any spirit that is not the holy spirit demonic spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases most believers have ignored the ministry of power in fact jesus said i think that should be in um luke luke 24 or so verse 48 49 there about he said but tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high tarry ye in jerusalem until ye be endued with power in mark chapter 1 verse 34 angel gabriel comes to mary and brings her news that she's going to be with child i hope that i'm right on that look i think that should be luke 134 please find it for me and he said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man ghana listen someone is asking a question now how will i rise how will prophecy come to pass coming from the kind of family i came from is it possible to emerge to thrive the answer is in verse 35 look one hallelujah the angel answered and said unto her the holy ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest how shall it happen that your music ministry will be heard all over Ghana how shall it happen that your business will rise and you will be dealing with nations at a transcontinental level how shall it happen that a young person who came from Takoradi or from Kumasi the Volta region or Accra from that lowly estate how does Gideon rise to become a mighty man it is called the power of the holy spirit do you believe this men rise because they acquire power that is greater than what keeps them down there are forces that have kept our parents forces that have kept people in your family for some of you you are the first of your family in your entire lineage to even attempt to rise let me speak to someone the power that has kept you down that will not let you arise that will not let you shine in the name of jesus i come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic and i declare arise and shine arise and shine businessman hear me arise and shine man of god arise and shine prophet of god Arise and shine. How shall these things be, seeing that I know not a man? How shall these things be? Can I tell you? Please look up. Don't miss tonight's session. I'm talking to leaders and business people. But I want to tell you this. Believing that there are no forces by default that are interested in keeping you down is a joke you better wake up when nathaniel saw jesus he said can anything good come out of nazareth he was not lying the last guy that came out of nazareth have you forgotten about him called samson nazarenes did not have longevity of impact they would only last for a short time and a force will bring them down you saw it happen to samson so when they said jesus one nazarene they said forget it it will not last there is a spirit that keeps them down there are many of you today you cannot rise because there are forces a man of god goes up goes down a businessman goes up goes down to the extent when they see you rising they laugh and say don't worry but i prophesy to someone in the name of jesus the son of the living god every handwriting and every ordinance every enchantment every covenant that connects you with the limitations of your territory i come by the rod of a higher priesthood and i speak to you in the name of jesus christ 
Arise, shine. Arise, shine. Arise, shine. In ministry, arise, shine. In business, arise, shine. It is the power of God that makes men signs and wonders beyond your territory, beyond the limitations. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? For as long as you ignore the ministry of power, don't you say power is just for men of God and preachers. The Bible says strong men retain wealth. It takes power to retain your position in life and destiny. You cannot produce God's dimension of result by the strength of the flesh. Listen to me. Please hear me. Don't be distracted. Listen. I have met in my life sincere men of God. People who have character like no other. Sounding scripture like no other, but their doors never open. These are people you know. When you listen to them, you can almost ask, why are you still at this level? The nation should be hearing what God has put in you. But there are forces that sat upon them. Every one of us, including the man who is speaking to you, we all came from backgrounds where there are spirits that don't let men rise. When you see men rise, the devil was forced to release them. Are we together? He said, I have heard of the cry of my people, Exodus chapter 3, by reason of their taskmasters, and I am come down. Someone shout, say, Father, every power keeping my destiny down keeping my influence down my business down by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare my release now I declare my exodus now open your mouth in one minute and pray come on pray how shall these things be Seeing that I know not a man, he said, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest power to advance, power to rise beyond territorial limitations, power to become a voice that speaks his praises to the nations, power to be a manifestation of the glory of God. Don't be tired. Your destiny is changing in the spirit. Don't be silent. Shabeka skadaba, ebrekete katos kataba, embrakata parakata skadaberi. In the name of Jesus, we swing open the curtains of destiny to make constructive advancement in spite of the limited powers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please listen to me. When I was about to start ministry, I remember the late Pat Robinson, the founder of 700 Club, CBN. I once watched a documentary where he was just speaking about what he did when he was a young man about to start ministry. And he said he went to the Lord to pray. And he said, Father, give me three things. Number one, give me wisdom. Number two, 
give me favor. Number three, give me the power of the Holy Spirit. I went and I cried before God in fasting and prayer. I said, if that is what you gave this man for him to rise, then Father, give me wisdom. I prayed and I said, Lord, give me power. It would take more than a sermon to cause a generation to hear you. Did you hear what I said? The Bible says the Greeks seek for a sign. It takes more than a sermon. The world today is too busy. There must be fire burning for Moses to turn and see. Takes more than a sermon. Let me speak to those of you who are men of God here. With all due respect, can I tell you, I don't mean to insult you. Please stop making a mess of your ministry and go and lock yourself and get genuine power. If power does not land in your life, I assure you one day you will commit suicide out of frustration. Power is what brands the believer's impact. Power. Men will not come to you for solutions just because of tribal sentiments. Where the carcasses are, there the eagles will gather. I sense in my spirit that upon someone right now, there is power that is falling. Honestly, not everyone, but I just sense in my spirit, someone needs the Holy Ghost power, genuine power, apostolic power that will land upon your head and land upon your destiny. And I stretch my hands, maybe not for everybody. I don't know where that man of God is. I don't know where that business person is. But in the name of Jesus, I stand in partnership with the grace that is upon this house let power fall upon you let power fall upon you let power from on high let it fall upon you let the power of the Holy Ghost fall upon you breathe Lord breathe breathe Lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life hallelujah please listen to me when i had an encounter with the lord jesus christ among the many things that i received was genuine power from heaven i know what power can do we are still students in the school of power but i tell you sincerely i have seen what power can do it can rewrite the narratives in a man's life in one day i'm talking of genuine power not stage managed power not a, a form of power it took power for the prophet to say by this time tomorrow by this time how does a man look at another man and say by this time tomorrow Ghana you are in a season right now where the ministry of power is needed like never before man of God it will take power to rewrite the destinies of the people God is sending to you listen there are young men and women who are in ministry right now some of you are here and God is already helping you can I tell you my friend hide yourself behind hold on to the horns of the altar until genuine power lands on your head I hope you think I'm not you don't think I'm wasting your time honestly speaking if the power of God does not land on your life let me talk to you my precious worship people in addition to the songs that you have stay with God and say place something on my head that when I raise my voice it's not just melodies men will hear hallelujah if you are in the fivefold ministry here please I beseech you by God 
Do not miss tonight's session. Do not miss tonight's session. When God gives gifts to men, it is because he desires that everyone walks into that experience. Hallelujah. I know what the power of God can do. Can I tell you, in one day, honestly, when genuine power arrives, in one day, the power of God can bring helpers to your life that you will ever need all through your life in ministry. I know what I'm saying. Our world today has not yet built technology to ignore power. We have not yet gone advanced in life. So no, there is nobody that sustains the ability to ignore genuine power. No, no. When Pharaoh saw power, he said, what is this one? Janus, Jambes, come. And when the serpent of Moses swallowed up the serpent of Pharaoh and he took it back. Ah, Pharaoh said, this is serious. As stubborn as Pharaoh was, when power came, he bowed. The triumph of power over the forces of darkness in Israel, it was so profound that Mary sang. Miriam, she said, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He says, the horses, even with his rider, have been thrown into the sea. My prayer for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is that God will restore the power that we always keep talking about in books. Every time we talk about people like um, Smith Wigglesworth and all these, they were not angels, they were men. But let me tell you the truth, power comes with a price. Now, this is the part of the sermon that the church does not want to hear. Power comes with a price. And up front, without wasting your time, let me tell you what the price for power is. All of you. All of you is the price for genuine power. Beyond your money, beyond your prayer, beyond your sacrifice. Until all of you goes as a sacrifice, forget about power. Now, hear me. I'm not here to glorify the devil. But you go and ask people who have gotten occultic power. You would not believe the sacrifices that they made. It was beyond bringing an animal or a goat or a whatever it is. They lie down in graves. They eat all kinds of things. They go through levels of consecration that you cannot imagine. To get mundane a similitude of power that with one declaration it can leave them. Believers admire power but they do not respect power. Because if believers have respect for power, they will also respect the sacrifices that bring power. Can I tell you? When you see genuine power, respect it. Because it's a testament of sacrifice in the spirit. Hallelujah. I've had the honor of studying revivals. I've had the honor of meeting a few people in their lifetime who spearheaded revivals across the nations of the earth. And every time I've had the honor of meeting any of these people, the question I always ask them is what was the secret of the hand of God upon your life or upon the person you walked with? I remember traveling to a particular nation and I met one of the fathers of faith. And he told me he was the one who used to interpret for T.L. Osmond and Maurice Cerullo. Once upon a time, they slept on the same bed. And I said, sir, please let me ask you a question. What did they do? How did they pray? What was their consecration like? Don't show me the videos of the miracles. No. I want to know what was the price that was paid with God that made God to trust them with such levels of grace. There are many of you who are here. I'm sure that most of you are not even interested. 
in asking God's servant or asking the people around you. Most people want impartation. They are not interested in knowing the price. It's the reason why they fall down and stand up and nothing happens. There is a real price for power. Power is not cheap, I tell you. It doesn't matter who gives you, whether the devil or God. Power in any case is not cheap. Do you know what it took Jesus to be exalted as Lord and Savior? His life. That name that was given to him. The price for that name. The Bible says because he gave himself to die even the death on the cross. Wherefore, on account of this, on account of the aforementioned, God had so highly exalted him and given him an office. And that that office was above every other office. That when you invoke the powers behind that office, every knee bows of things in heaven, things in the earth, and things under the earth. And that every tongue must confess to the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. I remember one time when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, I was like a dead man on the ground. And he stretched his right hand. You know, I say this, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the globe, so I'm very careful to say this. People talk about having encounters with Jesus today, and it's not for me to judge any man's encounter. But can I tell you, by the authority of Scripture, most of the Jesus people are meeting is not the Jesus of the Bible. When you meet the Jesus of the Bible, you will never be normal again. Go and read your Bible. Are we together? When Saul met Jesus, it's not whether he wanted to change or not. The, encounter, the impact of that encounter changed his life forever. When the Lord Jesus appeared to me, I was like a dead man. How he came into my room, I no, no use of door, no use of matter, had no power over him. And here was a young man lying down on the ground. And he looked at me. His mouth was not moving, but I was hearing what he was saying. A spirit communication beyond the realm of words. And then he stretched his right hand towards me. Brothers and sisters, light that left his majesty and entered me. How a human being survives that light is like taking the light from the sun and putting it inside an ant. How I did not die is a question I will ask him when we see his face. Hallelujah. And then when that happened, it took me more than one year to be back to myself. I was not normal again. I'm telling you, I didn't live like a normal human being again. My priorities shifted. My appetite shifted. It was as if he was someone who had some kind of thing wrong with him. That is the impact of an encounter with his majesty. But from that experience, when I opened my Bible, it was like something happened to me. Like somebody put something inside me. What is the meaning of this? Take it higher for me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your power, Holy Ghost power, rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of power, rest on me. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. It says, but surely I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord full of power man of god full of power businessman full of power 
and then you will see yourself manifesting dimensions that no force in Ghana it doesn't matter how long it was there you will scatter it and give way as if the devil does not exist preacher pay the price let the power of the Holy Ghost rest upon you and you will see that there is no limit to your rising do you believe what I'm telling you the power of the Spirit T.L. Osborne went to India and he went to preach when he was done preaching powerless preaching he made an altar call and nobody came they almost chased him out of that place and he was angry in the spirit and he said he went back and said God what is the meaning of this and God told him your message is correct but it was not backed up with power and the Bible says he I mean that history tells us that he paid the price and when genuine power landed on his head he went back to India again and when he was preaching, people were looking at him. And he said, where is the blind? Come. Where is this? Come. He called certain people. And miracles began to erupt there. And the people started to shout. One sermon that power preaches is greater than a thousand words. I hope you know that the power of God is also an evangelist. And there is a sermon it can preach. There is an audience that only hears the sermon. Of power I vowed before God as a man of God that I will never travel to any land and any nation just to go and deliver a nice lecture and return back it's my covenant with God that I will never step my feet upon a nation and then at the end of it they just say wow this nice preacher came return back in peace God bless you no our assignment is to shift climates that when you step into territories Elijah was a man of like passion Elijah did not announce in a radio station that rain will not come from one position he said there shall be no rain over a space of three and a half years that when you are full of power when you land in a territory the territorial forces acknowledge ah jesus i know paul i know joshua selman i know you can add your name to the list in the name of jesus the son of the living god please sit down let me give you one more and then we're done wisdom wisdom power by the spirit please hold two people now that will start running so they don't enjoy themselves whether you're an usher or not just hold them and you can bring them and keep them i just saw this in a vision the power of god is coming on two people and they will start running literally please hold them so they don't enjoy themselves let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me let your power power to prosper rest on me rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me oh rest on me power to prosper rest on me let me give you the last manifestation of glory dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salmon. and that is i want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.